All right, for this week's fly, we're gonna go with Kelly Gallup's Heifer Groomer or Fathead. Um, this is essentially the articulated zoo cougar. Um, this was the first fly, first articulated streamer that I tied, and I wish I still had that thing here. Um, man, it was ugly. <laughs> I did a terrible job on it, but you know, I mean, it was the first articulated fly that I tied, and I thought it was, I thought it was gold. But looking back on it, things have, thankfully, I've gotten a little bit better at these things. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with this here. It's a simple fly. Uh, it's a four-part fly. You got marabou, uh, mallard flank. We're gonna back this off just a touch. Uh, Marabou mallard flank, some flashing deer hair, and that's it. But this thing is a mover in the water. Um, and it's got it's got some really good motion for being for being as as simple as the pattern looks, it really moves a lot, so trying to tie and talk at the same time here it doesn't always work out but we're just gonna palmer uh, probably um, I'm getting a little short on the yellow marabou here but uh, we're probably gonna palmer probably three plumes I'm, I'm guessing is what it's gonna take to get to the front of this hook and we're gonna go with a mallard flank over top of it so just like any of the Palmer ones, you know, just go ahead and get started. Not all the way back to the barb of the hook because, as you can see, the the flanks or or the uh, the plumes are gonna flow back a little bit further. So if you started back at the where the barb of the hook is, I mean, your stuff's gonna wind up all the way back here, and you're gonna have a really long taily fly, and it's not exactly what you want. So we start this. Uh, I don't know. We'll go. It's a two-thirds point is where it will start this and just go ahead and tie your marabou in, palmer it in openly. Just kind of open loop it to the front. Come back over top of this and it's going to be repeated the whole way up. Like I said, getting down to the bottom of this stack here. But uh, Normally it would only take two plumes if I had, you know, good select material, but like I'm, I'm getting down to the end of the yellow here, so we're going to have to kind of piece this together, but uh, do this one in yellow, gray, white, black, olive, you know, your standard colors, but you can do it in any, any color you want. These are some pretty sparse plumes here, so I think that's why it's going to take us three to get all the way to the front, but we will get through them and it's going to look better than the first one I tied, I'll promise you that. <laughs> to the front now you'll see like I leave I don't know maybe an eighth of an inch of stem I don't know if the camera can pick that up yeah it can I leave about an eighth of an inch of stem right here so when I turn this as you can see it's standing straight back but when I put the hackle pliers on it and I start to spin that leaves a little bit of room for that marabou plume to go in the direction that I want it um, 
I was going to say, watch that one make a liar out of me, but it went how I want it. So you have your shiny side, your uh, package side facing the eye of the hook, as always. But uh, yeah, I think that'll work. Like I said, these ones are a little bit sparse. But I think this is going to do the trick for us. But just leaving that little bit of extra, you know, that eighth inch of stem to work with, your, your plumes will rotate on you and you're able to have your shiny side, your package side facing the direction you want it to. I'm just not going to be happy with this one even though it's on camera. Um, I'm just not going to be happy with it, so we're going to throw another stack in here to fill this out. Um, like I said, typically, uh, that's a decent one. Typically, two plumes, and you can get just a front. But once again, we're working with what we have. I don't have time to run to the shop today after work, so. Thought I had better marabou quality than what I wound up having, so. Oh well. Just a little bit more time of me running my mouth, that's all. And this one's not a great one either, but it'll, it'll work. So just work this to the front here. We'll get one more wrap over top of that. Kind of preen all this stuff back. And this is going to be it for Marabou on the back hook. Kind of made a mess out of that. And just go ahead and peel this back. Work your Marabou back a little bit. And there's the nice thick plumes, or the nice thick back portion that we're looking for. I mean, as you can see, you can't see any of the gaps in through here or anything. It just took us a little bit more than what it should have. But uh, anyhow, moving on. Next we're gonna take um, just a wood duck dyed mallard flank. As you can see, this one's nice and straight stemmed right down the center. It's even on both sides. We're gonna take this and just throw this right over the top just like the cougar, the boogeyman. Um, it's not gonna, I mean, unless you get a really, really good back plume, it's not gonna cover all of this excess up. And honestly, you really don't want it to because that plume, or the, uh, that feather will wind up, it seems like it moves on you just a little bit. And this little bit of motion in the back is not gonna hurt anything. And I think it actually adds to the fly not being trapped by the by the flank feather. So, just like the cougar and the, the boogeyman, run this right down the center. And I think I'm happy with that. Kind of, sort of. Just go ahead and trim that and live with it. There we go. Now I'm really going to clinch down on these, just getting that stem really dug in. And that one looks pretty good. As you can see, our flank feather is going right down. The stem's going right down the center of the hook. And our back fly is done, or our back hook is done. Finish and get that out. And before I do that, grab our yellow and just touch this up. And we'll take just a shot of zap here. A lot of times when I'm working with these flight feathers, um, 
I will throw a shot of zap on top of it just because it's not like you, you can really double over the stem of that feather and catch it and keep it from coming out. So just a little bit of glue, I don't know, to me it just gives me a little bit of extra reassurance that that thing's not going to fall out after a fish or two. But there's your back half and we're going to grab our front hook, the back one. Uh, I'm not certain on the, the hooks that Kelly used on the original for these. Um, probably should have give him, shot him a message and figured out exactly what he used. But um, for the back hook, I went with a 2461 Daiichi size 4, and the front's a size 2. So we've got our front and back hooks connected here, same as always, just a little bit more, um, just a little bit less of a distance than the uh, diameter of your bead. That allows your back hook to kick around and uh, gives it some freedom while it's going to keep it from filing on itself and hooking its... And getting hung up on its on the front hook so we're gonna go ahead with just some gold flashaboo here we're gonna run this back um, I think it's eight strands per side is what I have um, adjust the flash as necessary whatever looks better to you stuff going back, double it over on itself. Kind of cover that up and we're going to take one quick trim right here about halfway back the flank feather and then just pull all these off to the side if you want. Those are spread out pretty well actually. I was going to say if you want you can stand the, the flash up. We'll just go ahead and do it. That way it's easier to see it than have me fumble around and try and explain it. But you can just go ahead and give like one or two wraps back there. And it'll kind of sp spread the, this flash out and kind of kick it off to the sides. Now, um, a little more so than just having it tied directly back. So, we're going to go back with our yellow marabou. Get that tied in, leave that eighth of an inch. Snip that. Work your way up, half hitch. And we'll start Palmer and Marabou for the body on this one. Didn't get a good grip on that one. sparse material. Really like this to be a lot wispier than what it is. But we'll make it work. Just go ahead and double over this. Yeah, that's really sparse. I'm going to try and pick a wispier one for this and hopefully it covers it up a little better. This one is a little wispier, but it's a shorter plume, so I'm probably only going to get about four good wraps out of it. Go ahead and half hitch, grab your. Hackle pliers give a good 
pinching that, and this one's really brittle, so I'm going to have to be careful. Hopefully it doesn't bust on me on the way forward. Oh, I can feel it letting go. <laughs> oh, my. I almost was quick enough. Almost. So this will be a lesson in the future. Get good material before you go shooting a video. I'm just trying to do this one by hand here. Instead of using the rotary function, I'll fumble over this. I almost always use the rotary function. There. I didn't get anywhere, but I got myself a little bit more bulk with that wispier feather. And well, we're really getting down to the bottom of this material here. back over top of this. We're getting there. Slowly but surely we're getting there. Hopefully this will be the last one. Throw in another half hitch. find a good section to get a good grip with that way I can maximize the length of the feather that I have to work with. That looks alright. And that peels back pretty nicely. So, yeah, it looks all right. I mean, like I said, it took us more material than what it should have, but we got there. Should be able to do that in two plumes, in all honesty. So we're going to go ahead and measure out our front flank feather. Trim that off. Once again, just lay this right over top. Set this in place, a couple loose wraps. Once it's sitting in the plane that you want it, you can go ahead and really wrench down on it. And get that to spin just slightly. That's looking good. You want to make sure um, that you have good straight flanks. If you look at this one right here, I pulled this one out of the package just as an example. And it's not the most extreme case, but you can see it's curving this direction. And if you went and laid this on top of your on top of your fly, that flank feather is kicking this way. It's kicking toward me. Your fly is always going to track this way. Um, with these nice straight flanks, your fly is going to be able to track in a... It, it's going to be true in the water. So we're just going to touch this with some zap again. There we 
go. Everything's looking good. Now the rest of this is just going to be for our collar and head. And this is Zoo Cougar style. Uh, a Zoo Cougar style head that we're going to be tying in. So we're going to grab our deer hair that we have pre-stacked. Measure out this collar. And same as on the cougar, I'll take these deer hair tips to between the point and the barb of the hook. So just go ahead and get those measured out, transfer them. And we're going to cut this deer hair nice and flush for our collar. Um, Kelly just did a video on setting these collars. Um, second here while I'm thinking. Very informative um, if you have any questions on how to set a collar properly check that video out I mean it's just so informative he, he's done it before like on his cougar videos and everything and I got a little bit long on that one actually I gotta trim this up we'll just go right through here We're nice and clean on the bottom. You can see that little half moon. The collar is working this direction and that direction. And it gives you that nice sculpting effect. But our bottom is clean. That's what we're after on this particular pattern. And I'll trim this up the best I can here. I'm not going to get too picky on it. Now we're going to go ahead and take two chunks of deer hair. Um, I'll wait until I get this cut show the amount that we're going to be using on this. Clean your deer hair up real good. And then I cut off the tips. As you can see right here, I cut the tips flush off. The butt ends are sitting right here. I already ran them through the comb. They're nice and clean. And then go ahead and just throw this in here. Find your center point. You have one loose, two a little bit tighter, and a third. Go ahead and just pull down. And you're going to get a nice rotation with your deer hair. Now, when we did the D&D, &D, um, like I said, we wanted that really nice, compact section of deer hair. Well, with a cougar, with a dungeon, you don't really want that. Um, you want things to be loose. You want the, the head to be able to shed water on your back cast and everything. So you don't really need to compact these. I mean, if you want, you can take a packer and just throw it back a little bit, but don't go getting um, out of control when you're when you're stacking this deer hair. You want it relatively loose, and I'm going to be pretty close on this one. Hopefully, it spins for me. Get pretty close to the eye. To start working it in, my thread's starting to disappear. And we get a nice spin. Don't pull too hard if you're using this gel spun thread. Um, it'll, it'll just blow up a deer hair head in, in a heartbeat if you pull really tight on it. This thread's really good, really strong stuff. So we'll go ahead and get this out of our way here, peel this back, and whip finish. Phone's ringing, it's not work, so it can wait.
grab a comb here and just run it through this stuff, kind of fluff things out a little bit. Keep our marabou away as most we can. You can see our mallard flank still running straight back. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our razor blade. I always start on the bottom end of these. Um, pretty much for any deer hair pattern, I like to start on the bottom. Especially with the cougars, the you know, fat heads, heifer groomer, dungeons, all that stuff, the white girl. I like to start on the bottom for some reason. So we're just going to take a nice flush cut on the bottom of this. properly. Now I'm going to try not to block the camera too much here with my hands and checking out the monitor. But just give yourself a nice little bend right here. Find the front of your hook and just push your way right through this back to your collar. And it looks like I have a Dolph spot or two on the side of this blade. That's better. So just work your way back to your collar. You want this head to be pretty bulky. And what this head is going to do is it's going to act as a as a prop in the water, keeping the fly in the right orientation. And with this bottom section being uh, being flat like this, we'll go ahead and show it. Obviously, it's going to get trimmed up a little bit more, but with this bottom section being flat like that, it's going to keep the fly in the orientation that you want it, and it's going to allow it to catch the different currents and dart and dive and go in different directions. Hey, knock it off. Same as always, find your collar. I throw my thumb right in this section and then I'll just push the razor blade right up to my thumbnail. And this just gives you a clean break between your between the head and the collar. And I'm gonna try not to get too awful picky on this while we're filming. I'll go ahead and clean it up real good before the picture is always. get a good overall profile of what we're after here. good enough right there and then I'll just take and trim this from behind to give it the last little bit of overall shape that we're after. And I've got some work to do on this side here but I'll get it cleaned up before the picture. But. There it is. There's another look at the bottom side. And as you can see, I have a little bit of work to do to get this symmetrical right here, just to clean that up and make the fly swim as it's, as it's intended to. But there you have it. There's Kelly Gallup's fat head or heifer groomer. But um, as always, any questions, leave them with me and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. But uh, thanks again and we'll catch you next week.